ओके सो नाउ लेट्स स्टार्ट विद दिस नेक्स्ट टॉपिक विच इज ऑन सर्कुलर परमोटेशन नाउ बिफोर वी स्टार्ट लेट मी रिकलेक्ट अ फ्यू थिंग्स यू रिमेंबर दैट वी डिड अ वर्ड कॉल्ड गार्डन एंड वी वॉन्टेड टू फाइंड आउट द नंबर ऑफ वेज इन विच द लेटर्स ऑफ दिस वर्ड कैन बी रीअरेंज्ड टेकन ऑल एट अ टाइम सो द आंसर हियर वॉज सिक्स फैक्टोरियल विच इज सेवन ट्वेंटी नाउ हाउ डिड दिस सिक्स फैक्टोरियल कम अप वी हैड सिक्स स्पेसिस हियर एंड द फर्स्ट वर्ड कैन बी फिल्ड अप इन सिक्स वेज द सेकेंड इन फाइव वेज द थर्ड वन इन फोर वेज वी हैव थ्री टू एंड वन ओके सो दिस इज सिक्स फैक्टोरियल नाउ इमेजिन दैट आई हैव टू सीट दीज सिक्स लेटर्स ऑन अ टेबल so i draw six chairs here or six lines and have to arrange them around a circle now will the answer be six factorial or something else the answer here is not six factorial but 6 minus 1 which is 5 factorial now why is here the answer as 5 factorial but here i have the answer as six factorial now listen to this carefully for example i place g here at any place let me call this let me sir in circle this place now if i ask you where have i placed g in this circle can you give me an answer no because in circle every point is symmetric i cannot name the point where i have placed g until and unless i number these chairs as 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 until and unless i do this i cannot really tell where i have placed g whereas when i arrange these letters in a line i can always say that i have placed g in the leftmost place or let's say fourth place from the left if i place it here so my point is that i always have an origin which is nothing but the directions i have placed first place to the left or i have placed it four places from the left but in a circle i do not have an origin i cannot if i ask you where have i placed g and i do not have these numbers you'll never be able to tell me where have i placed g but now let's say i put another letter here a now if i ask you where have i placed a you can easily tell me that you have placed a two positions to the right of g now to the right of g if i assume that g is facing outwards okay now g is facing let's say there is a boy or a girl named g and she is sitting with the face pointing outside so a is two places to the right of g or in other words i can say four places to the left of g so what i mean to tell you here is that when we place students or letters in a line in a single line i always have an origin which is direction now this is the leftmost direction and this is the rightmost direction or the leftmost place and the rightmost place whereas in a circle i need to place one person and then the other persons are placed taking that person as the origin okay so let's move on the number of permutations of n things around a circle taken all at a time is given by n minus 1 factorial so here i had six letters i had to place them around a circle so that is why 6 minus 1 which is 5 factorial okay so let's do a practice question on this there are eight boys which need to be seated on a circular table okay now i have let me draw a circle here and eight boys need to be seated so i will draw eight chairs here or eight lines okay such that there is no restriction so the answer to the first case is very simple 8 minus 1 which is 7 factorial the second case says that two of them always are together now let's name these eight boys i'll have let's say a b c d e 
F, G and H. Let's assume that these two people, G and H, always have to be seated together. So it's the same case as we did in a linear permutation. I'll consider these two people as one entity. So now what are the total number of people I want to sit? Seat 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and this is one entity. So I need to seat 7 people. What is the formula if I have to seat 7 people around a circle? It is 7 minus 1 which is 6 factorial. But this is not my final answer because let's say I seat GH like this and I have a formation. There can be another formation in which GH can be together but would be a different one that is when I have H here and I have G here. So my final answer is gonna be 6 factorial multiplied by 2. Let's take the third case here. Two of them are always separated. This is nothing but if I have the total number of ways which is 7 factorial in which there is no condition. They can be together, they can be separated. So this is when there is no condition. Minus I have the number of ways for this second case which is 6 factorial multiplied by 2. And these are the cases where two of them are always together are always together so this gives me the number of cases when they are always separated so the third answer is nothing but the first question minus the second question so i hope this is clear why do we have n minus 1 factorial which i explained in the beginning and this practice question let's take up another question there are 18 boys which need to be seated on a circular table. Among them, two boys Benjamin and Franklin are brothers. In how many ways can they be seated such that there is always one person between these two brothers? Okay, so I have a circle and I have to seat 18 boys which includes let's say Ben, the short form for Benjamin and Frank short form for Franklin and I have to have one person between them so in other words I want Ben some person X and Frank on this table okay in now in how many ways can I choose this X we'll ask this question I can choose X in 18 minus 2 is equal to 16 ways out of these 16 people, anyone can be between Benjamin and Franklin. So let's say I see it Ben here and I see it Franklin here. So I have this person X in between. Also, this is case one. In case two, what I'll have? I'll have Frank here. I will have X here only and I'll have Benjamin here. Okay. So I can choose this x in 16 ways multiplied by now how many more people do I have to seat 18 minus 3 because I have already seated Ben I have already seated a person x and I have already seated Frank so 18 minus 3 15 ways so 16 into 15 factorial these 15 people can be arranged in 15 factorial ways. Now why I am taking 15 factorial here and not 15 minus 1 14 factorial here? Now this would be clear to you if you paid attention in the previous slide where I explained that this 15 minus 1 is only when I have to define an origin first. Like we took the garden example. I placed G which was the origin in the previous slide. But here I already have an origin. I have already placed th these three people. I have placed Ben x and frank so i don't need an origin anymore so 15 more people here will be seated in 15 factorial ways only and not 15 minus 1 14 factorial ways okay so we've reached here i have 16 into 15 factorial now i'll also multiply this by 2 because i have two cases 
I can have Ben here and Frank here or Frank here and Ben here. So what is my final answer? It is 16 multiplied by 15 factorial multiplied by 2. This is my final answer. I hope you are clear on circular permutations now. Okay. You know, the very intuitive way of solving these questions is keep on questioning yourself as, as you read the question. For example, in this slide, uh, when I was explaining that I'll have a person X here. So the question, sorry. So the question I asked was, in how many ways can I place X here? So this is a question you need to ask yourself in your mind. In how many ways can I place X? So this makes it very intuitive and you will always end up with the right answer. Let's move on to another type of circular permutations. Okay. The number of permutations of n things in case of a necklace or a garland is given by n minus 1 factorial divided by 2. Now why do we divide here by 2? I will tell you why. Let's assume we have this garland here and these are the beads. Now I have already placed the all these colors in let's say if there were n beads I have already placed them around in a circle in n minus 1 factorial ways okay which we have already discussed. Now why does this divide division by 2 come? Because I can easily flip over a gar garland for example one position to place a garland is this and the second position is if I pick up the garland from this pink ball pick it up and turn it over and place it here now this garland would be upside down this pink ball or this pink bead will come here on this blue one and this blue one will go here so I that is why I divide by 2 because these two formations would be the same but in n minus 1 factorial I have counted them twice that is why I divided by 2 ok so here is something to explain you further see I flip to the right I had x1 I had x2 and I had x3 I flip it x1 remains here but x2 comes here and x3 comes here so answer to this was if I had to place just in a circular arrangement I had 3 beats so it was 3 minus 1 factorial which was 2 factorial or 2 but since it is a garland and it can be flipped okay the answer is 2 factor 2 by 2 which is just one way this is just one way in which I can arrange the beads of this garment so I hope this is clear this x2 see this x2 here comes here and this x3 also changes position it comes to the left so remember whenever you have a necklace or a garland the answer is n minus 1 factorial divided by 2. Let's do a practice question. Find the number of necklaces that can be formed using beads of 8 different colors. So my answer is simple here. It is n minus 1 factorial divided by 2 I have 8 beads so it is 8 minus 1 factorial divided by 2 or 7 factorial by 2 find the number of necklaces in the second part here that can be formed using beads of 8 different colors out of which 2 are of the same color so in this case also I will have 7 factorial which is 8 minus 1 factorial divided by 2 and I will again divide it by 2 factorial. Why this 2 factorial? Because I have 2 of the same color. So this is the same rule as we discussed in a linear permutation. Same rule. If you remember the word hallucination we did the same rule here also I am applying the same rule the division by 2 factorial is because 2 beads are of the same color ok so next topic here is when we have to arrange some n number of people 
around a polygon if n people are to be arranged around a k sided regular polygon such that each side contains the same number of people then the number of arrangements will be given by n factorial by k you just have to remember this formula okay i'll do a practice question for example 32 people are to be seated on the sides of a regular octagon find the number of arrangements okay now the assumption here is that i have to seat equal people on each of the sides otherwise this formula is not valid so the answer here would be 8 is k the number of sides of an octagon 32 is n so my answer is 32 factorial divided by 8 a couple of things you need to note here note 1 if the polygon is not regular that is the sides of the polygon are uneven in length then the number of arrangements here will be just n factorial whatever be the number of sides so if i remove the word regular here from this octagon my answer is 32 factorial only if it is not a regular polygon the second thing you need to remember in case of a rectangular table the number of arrangements would be n factorial by 2 where 2 represents the degree of symmetry of the rectangle okay so if i draw a rectangle here here i don't have all the four sides equal i have this side a is equal to this side b this side sorry a which is the breadth and i have the length b and this side is also b whereas in a regular figure for example a square all the four sides are same i have this side equal to this side is equal to this side is equal to this side so 32 people around a square would be 32 factorial divided by 4 but around a rectangle would be 32 factorial divided by 2 because the degree of symmetry here is 2 not all the sides are equal this side is equal to this and this side is equal to this you just need to memorize the formulas on this slide don't go into the too much detail on how this formulas came up but you just need to remember them